Good morning. Good morning. The people and the pastor of Lakeside United Methodist Church welcome you today into our worship, and we thank you for sharing your worship time with us. Greetings to our friends at North Shore and here on the peninsula, to our broadcast worship members and friends, to our guests who might be with us today, and to the young people who are worshiping with us today. The children in the sanctuary are a blessing and we also offer children's care through ages five in the first floor Northwest Wing, as we do for the young disciples from ages six to 12 on the second floor after the um, children's time here in worship. You all received in your bulletin a contact card, and we would ask that you fill that out with care for one for each family and place it in the collection plate, and that way we can stay in connection with uh, the members of our church who have concerns. We have a couple of announcements this morning. First of all, the flowers on the altar uh, in the sanctuary today are given in memory of Reverend George Taylor by his family, this being the 99th anniversary of his birth. Also, uh, we would like to remind you that the food pantry is collecting canned uh, goods this week and this month, and you will find a container for them by the uh, front door. Okay. This is the Lord's day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Open wide the windows of our spirits, O Lord, and fill us full of light. Open wide the door of our hearts, that we may receive and entertain thee with all our power of adoration and love. Amen. The Hebrew scriptures today are from Numbers, chapter 11, verses 4 through 10. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but the manna to look at. Now the manna was like corridor seed, and its color was like the color of gum resin. The people went around and gathered it, ground it in the mills, or beat it with the mortars, then boiled it in pots and made cakes of it, and the taste of it was like the taste of cakes baked with oil. When the dew fell on the camp at night, the manna would fall with it. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. And the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. Here ends the reading. This is the good news of the gospel according to Mark in the ninth chapter. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, Whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The word of the Lord. God. Gracious God, send your spirit that we are hearers and doers of your word. The people say, Amen. 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 Please be seated. Amen. 
I don't know about you, Keith, but that was quite a menu that the uh, Hebrews will remember, garlic and onions and leeks. My goodness. Made me wonder if they knew what ramps are. Do any of you know what ramps are? Mm, that's a good thing if you don't know. <laughs> They're an onion-like thing that grow, um, oh, probably in the hills of West Virginia, perhaps somewhere in the hills of Ohio. But uh, they're the type of thing that if you eat a little bit of it, no one wants to be around you for the next week. <laughs> Some people like that stuff. And some people are affected by their religion to like odd things. Religion can cause people to think oddly. Faith and following may cause us to contemplate and to choose. Religion might cause us to think oddly. Recently, uh, friends were describing to me uh, an event on their street in Akron. As the acorns are following, or falling, I should say, as the acorns are falling, they were going around gathering them up for the look of them and for the feel of them, for the pleasure of just gathering them. And one particular acorn stood out to, to my friends. She really liked it. And she put it in her car as a sort of a good luck charm, she thought. It was so beautiful, so autumn-like. This, this is a pleasant thing. I'm going to carry it with me. So she did. She kept it in her car. Two days later, the oak tree in her neighbor's yard fell on her car and smashed it. And she began to wonder if somehow or another the universe were playing tricks on her, that somehow or another this acorn, which was supposed to be a good thing, had drawn to her some kind of karma that may have caused the oak tree to fall. Religion can cause people to think oddly. The Hebrews suffered in the wilderness. They had manna to eat. It was provision for them. But they groaned for the garlic and the onions that they used to get, even while in slavery in Egypt. They, pref they could have preferred these oily cakes of manna, which were given to them in their freedom on their journey, but all they could do was to think about what they ate in the past in slavery. Religion can cause people to think oddly. And they blamed the Lord and Moses. Manna was for them in the moment. But they wanted to live in the past. In the course of the recent two or three weeks... My parents, as some of you know, celebrated their 60th anniversary. And in the next few days, my father's great aunt Martha died. And just the other day, his brother, Dean, died. He visited them regularly in the care home provided for them, where daily he would watch them weaken, both in body and in brain in the same way that his mother had suffered for many years. And now a cousin of mine wants to put clay angels and paper angels and all kinds of angels around my, my father and mother's home. She looks at them as kind of a particular religious usher or monitor that will somehow watch over them. And that's a little unsettling to my parents. Religion can cause people to think oddly. Even my cousin's good intentions out of her 
other religious persuasion can cause unsettling feelings. In Jesus' time, his followers stressed out. They objected to others who claimed to be doing the same kinds of things that the disciples were doing in their ministry. Why, their identity and their boundaries had been stepped upon. So the followers of Jesus tried to put a stop to what the others were doing. Religion can cause people to think oddly. You're not us, so stop that. And what you give and what you do is a problem for us. Stop that. But Jesus teaches, it's all good. It's all good. All acts of piety, all acts of charity are good. Whoever does them. Giving water is not a problem. Giving health care to the ill is not a problem. Giving child care to families who are trying to keep things together in their work lives and their home lives, giving that is not a problem. Creating safe workplaces creating safe ways for people to invest and to have some assurance that that will be, will be held in good trust. That's not a problem. Regulating the use of vehicles on the highway, regulating the way we use weapons, is not a problem. But religion can cause people to think oddly. Faith and following can open us up to contemplation and choosing. Jesus teaches that a gift of a cup of cold water done in his name is a good thing. But followers today have kind of lifted that to a different level and, and now they want to put their label on what they do. We're doing this in his name so we're good. They put a label on what they're doing. But that's not what in my name means. In that language, in my name is do it in the way that I do it. In the way that I give bread and cup for all giving thanks to God and giving. That's what doing something in my name means. It doesn't mean putting a label on it, religious or otherwise. It means doing it as Jesus would have done it, giving thanks to God and giving bread and cup to all. Do this in remembrance of me. It's all good. And that can be a challenge for us especially when we're suffering. If it's all good, why do we suffer? Why don't we have the garlic and the leeks and the onions? Why are we stuck with this manna? Again, the manna moaners complained in this way, and Jesus' followers thought they were suffering too because others were stepping on their toes. Now, suffering means that you're not getting what you want. That's what it means. Whether that's in health or in life or in change, suffering means we're not getting what we want. And so when we are feeling short of shrift, does the gospel then teach us? Yes, the gospel teaches that it is all good. Water for anyone by anyone. Water is a gift. And the gospel goes on to say that all are salted by fire. And the fire is the universal spirit. 
And the gospel goes on to say salt can be zesty or depleted. And so giving and acting is always something that happens in the moment. And Jesus goes on in the gospel to say, have salt and be at peace, which is to say to contemplate and choose your giving in this moment, make your gift in accord with the universal spirit because you are salted with fire in this moment. Don't be depleted, be salt. And be at peace among yourselves. This is a maturity of spirit that's like singing, we've got peace like a river, we've got joy like a fountain, we've got love like an ocean. Water in the gospel is the gift. The fire is the spirit. And the salt is the giving in the spirit in this moment. And that requires us then to contemplate and to choose who we are, whose we are, and what we shall do in his name, which means to do this not with a label, but in the way that he would have done, giving thanks to God, giving bread and cup. As the poem on the front of the bulletin says, we live as those salted and as those singed. We live as those spiritual and charitable. And we have contemplation and choice. We have choice to go by a riverside and have war no more. We have a choice to to go to a river, to gather there where our hearts will quiver with a melody of peace. We have a choice to be with the saints at the river, a river that flows eternally, universally, in which God's grace is available for us to choose our way. Let us pray. Gracious God, salt us, Refresh us, give us fire, and let us live in your name. Through Christ our Lord, the people say, Amen. Amen. Our affirmation is 885. Will you join me, friends, in this declaration of faith, the modern, 885. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ, and we find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end, that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. And now, may you like acorns grow into large oaks, and may you stand strong, planted by the river. And may you not bend or weave, but may you reach out, and may you grow. And may all good things come to rest in your limbs and branches. And may you, by the riverside, grow strong with deep roots and have life abundant and joyful. And God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you now and forever. The people say...